Welcome to the War Stories. In this episode, I'll be discussing the Pomona 12 Street Sharkies. The Pomona 12 Street Sharkies, also known as P12, are a Mexican American gang located in Pomona, California. Pomona is a large, sprawling city with a population of more than 150,000 people. It sits beneath the San Gabriel Mountains on the eastern edge of Los Angeles County. The city was once prosperous, but over several decades, its economy declined as businesses closed or migrated elsewhere. Due to this flight of resources, Pomona is now one of the poorest cities in the United States. The city's population is also much younger than the national average, with an unusually high percentage of children. Sadly, many of Pomona's children are growing up in homes with an absent parent, living in neighborhoods plagued by crime, and struggling in poor performance schools. Pomona 12th Street came into being in the early 1940s, originally known as Sharkies. When the city installed number street signs that same decade, the group's name changed to reflect the street that served as the heart of its territory, 12th Street. Their neighborhood stretched from Mission Boulevard to Philadelphia Boulevard between White Avenue and Reservoir Street. They are the largest Hispanic gang of Pomona with over 200 active members, although a hardcore nucleus of about 50 is responsible for most of their crimes. In 1972, Sharky Park was built with federal funds to provide neighborhood kids with alternatives to gang violence, but it backfired by becoming the headquarters for the 12th Street Sharky Gang. The 12th Street Gang is known to use the shark as its mascot. They are arguably the most hated gang of Pomona. They nearly beef with every gang in the city. Their main rivals include Cherryville, Sir Olive Street 13, Sir Cyclones, Sintown Crips, and the Southside Village Crips. The war between the 12th Street Sharkies and Cherryville has caused the most bloodshed in the city of Pomona. This war goes back six, seven decades. Sometime in the 1950s, a sharp division arose between leading Sharky families. While specifics of the dispute aren't clear, the conflict angered a faction of the gang enough to break ranks and form their own gang. Thus was born Cherryville, and with it, became Pomona's most fierce and long-running gang rivalry. In the years that followed, Pomona 12th Street and Cherryville members frequently skirmished over territory and girls, ending up in hospitals and jails. They fought with fists, tire irons, and later guns. Pomona 12th Street's headquarters was Madison Park, while Cherryville members made a hangout of a vacant lot on the west side on Hamilton Boulevard. Separated by fewer than a dozen blocks, the barrios of Cherryville and 12th Street differ dramatically. Many of the families of Pomona have been shattered by gang violence, but the problem is especially severe in the tiny neighborhood of the Cherryville Gang. With about 75 homes clustered around a horseshoe-shaped street, police said seven people have been killed on that street during a seven-year period of warfare. The neighborhood has by far the city's highest concentration of gang-related deaths. Cherryville is unable to expand its territory beyond its four-block boundary or match the frequency of 12th Street attacks. Cherryville's home turf is isolated from other neighborhoods by railroad tracks, vacant lots, an industrial district, and a major thoroughfare. Their turf is much more cohesive and insular. The Cherryville gang is only 75 to 80 members strong, with 20 to 25 hardcore members as its nucleus. By contrast, the 12th Street gang is based in a community of mostly low-income, one-story homes. 12th Street is a larger and less cohesive group, with virtually all of South Pomona in its territory. Let's fast forward to the 1980s, with peace talks in the gutter, and new drugs entering the neighborhood. The war between 12th Street and Cherryville is beginning to reach new heights. In late March of 1987, Robert Hernandez was shot down at his girlfriend's house just the day after he presented her with an engagement ring. He wasn't a hardcore gang member, but he was from Cherryville and was in a pretty well-known gang area at the time of his death. His funeral was held on April 3rd, 1987 at the Holy Cross Cemetery. About 250 mourners were in attendance, which included close family and friends many of them being Cherryville gang members. The graveside service was almost over when Father Michael Burns heard the first shot. Gunmen from 12th Street opened fire at the crowd of mourners. When the first shots erupted, Father Burns dove for cover, lying on his stomach next to Robert's casket. Four people were shot. A fifth mourner, an 80-year-old woman, was injured when she was accidentally catapulted from her wheelchair by someone trying to rush her to safety. It was complete pandemonium. Cherryville gang members who were attending the funeral returned fire. They then chased their rivals two blocks away to a nearby school, where teachers locked students inside their classrooms as gunfire was exchanged on campus. Bullets pierced the windows of two classrooms. Luckily, nobody was injured. Moments after the shooting, a newspaper reported trying to cover the shootout were attacked by Cherryville gang members who ripped film out of one camera and stole another camera while beating the two newsmen. Officers intervened and rescued the journalists. In the aftermath of the funeral attack, some of the older 12th Streeters have indicated that they were not pleased with the way the shooting happened. During this period, violence between the two sets was at an extreme. Throughout an eight-year period in the 80s, warfare between the two groups claimed 32 lives. Later on that same year, on Christmas Day, 
Eight people were wounded when shots were fired from a car into two homes along 7th Street, which is in 12th Street territory. The attacks, which apparently involved two guns, took place within three minutes and a half mile of each other at about 11 p.m. The Cherryville gang is believed to be responsible for the shooting. The shootings took place only five days after representatives of four gangs, including Cherryville, had broken bread together in a symbolic pledge to honor a truce during the holidays. However, the 12th Street gang did not participate in those truce talks. Violence carried over into the 90s. In late April of 1990, Cherryville did a drive-by in Sharky territory, which resulted in the death of a seven-year-old son of a 12th Street gang member. The following day, on the evening of April 26, 1990, using a stolen car, four Sharkies drove into Cherryville territory. A group of people were standing in front of the Gutierrez home. As the car passed the house, two Sharkies, one armed with a rifle, the other armed with a handgun, jumped out of the vehicle and shot at the group. Fatally wounded Jesus and seriously injuring David and his infant son David Jr. The Sharkies then returned to the car. As the car drove off, its occupants yelled, Trust Street! Later on that day, two eyewitnesses, Renee and Rosanna, identified the suspect as a shooter in a photo lineup. The police arrested the suspect the next morning. Cruz Magana was ultimately found guilty of one count of first degree murder and two counts of attempted murder. He was sentenced to life in prison. In what seems to be a never ending war, let's fast forward to September 29th, 2009. Around 3 a.m., Armando, who was a well-known member from Cherryville, was walking alongside Illinois Street and Laurel Avenue. At approximately 3.20 a.m., Robert, who's from 12th Street, approaches Armando and lets off shots. Armando was hit eight times and died at the scene. Sometime between then and November 5th, Robert told a longtime friend about the murder. His friend's name was Lorraine. After confessing to her, Robert began to grow suspicious that Lorraine might tell the murder. He and a few accomplices, including his cousin, drove down the mound badly. Where Lorraine was eventually murdered, he and his accomplices buried her body in the mountains. Within a day, he grew suspicious of his cousin's loyalty to him. And in the same fashion, drives him to an overpass on the 3800 block of Walnut Avenue. His cousin was ultimately murdered and left for dead. On November 7th, Robert was chased and located in Montclair. Robert was eventually convicted of the three murders and sentenced to death. The 12th Street Sharkies also beat for the Southside Village Crips. After the Watts riots in Los Angeles in August of 1965, many of the city's black families were looking for ways to escape the violence there. They began migrating east, many settling in Pomona. Not long after the first blood and crib gang started forming in Los Angeles in 1969, dialing blood sprung up in North Pomona and the Trey 57 Crips began to grow on the west side. Latino students bullied at school by the black gangs, banded together for protection, starting gangs of their own in the early 1970s. The Southside Village Crips shared territory with 12th Street, from 9th Street to Phillips, between Buena Vista and Park Avenue. The back and forth shooting between the Southside Village Crips and the 12th Street Gang are racially motivated, with non-affiliates often caught in the crossfire. On August 25th, 1994, the 12th Street Gang conducted a drive-by shooting, striking Everett and Fairly Wood and Bobby, who were both from the Southside Village Crips. About two weeks later, on September 11th, 1994, around 10 p.m., LaMarcia drove her car to Church's Chicken on Mission in Hamilton. Mary was in the front seat in the back with three members of the Southside Village Crips. Upon their arrival, LaMarcia went to the window to order food, while the three Crips jumped out and stood in front of the restaurant. Meanwhile, three teenagers, Angel, Jose, and Felix, were stopped at a red light at Hamilton and Mission. When someone apparently from the group of Crips yelled out, Sit down, fuck snails! It was common for a Crip subset to yell out the name of another to divert attention from the actual perpetrators. As the Crips approached, the three teenagers, who were afraid, began walking faster and crossed the street against the light. Looking back, Jose saw one man with a gun in his hand. When he was halfway across the street, one or two of the men shot at them seven to eight times. Jose began running after the first shot and had just reached the sidewalk when he was shot in the hip. Felix fled on his bicycle upon hearing the initial shots. Angel ran off while pushing his bike, but returned to assist Jose. Although neither Angel and Jose were believed to be gang members, the evidence presented established that a month before the subject shooting, there had been nearly 30 violent incidents, including assault and murder, between the 12th Street Sharkies and the Southside Village Crips. 
and occasionally a non-affiliate was mistaken for a gang member. Walter Jefferson and Andre Brown were ultimately convicted on three counts of attempted murder. They were each sentenced to three consecutive life terms, adding to the already existing racial tensions. The Trail Street Gang has a clique named Tinto Killers. Tinto is a derogatory Spanish term for black Americans. It's equivalent to the N-word with the hard R. On the night of April 17th, 2009, Marquise and a friend attended a party that was promoted on social media. The house party was located on the 2200 block of Virginia Avenue in Pomona, which is near 12th Street territory. Most, if not all, of the 200 party goers were Latino, and there were many 12th Street gang members in attendance. Marquise was the only black person at the party. Marquise began dancing with a few Latina girls at the party. Members of the 12th Street gang took notice and got upset. A group of about a dozen 12th Street gang members approached Marquise on the dance floor and asked, N-word, do you know where you're at? At that point, they surrounded him. In an attempt to protect himself, Marquise pulled out a gun, which gave him enough space to get to the front of the house. Marquise took off running. The group of 12th Street gang members chased Marquise out of the party and proceeded to viciously attack him on the side of the house. After escaping the initial beating, Marquise broke free and started running down Virginia Avenue. But the mob of 12 Streeters caught up with him and dropped him to the ground. From there, they proceeded to viciously attack him. When it was all over, Marquise's friend found Marquise lying in the street, disrobed with multiple fatal stab wounds and a gunshot wound to the head. Witnesses said a Latina girl put her own safety at risk to help Marquise during the beating, was assaulted and called the N-word lover. The day after, one of the attackers messaged a fellow gang member. Did the N-word that we fucked up die? We stomped the shit out of his face. One of the teens named Arturo robbed and stole Marquise's shoes after the attack. Nine gang members were ultimately convicted in connection to the murder. On July 5th, 2003, around 1 p.m., Desmond Boykins was taking a walk down Artesia Street, which is located in Pomona. A white car then stopped close to Desmond. An arm holding a handgun protruded from the passenger side window when the first shot was fired. Another two shots went off and Desmond went down. An eyewitness named Albert saw the shooting from across the street and rushed over to Desmond's aid. As he hurried to the location, the white car drove past him. He saw two males in the front seat and one in the back. All three appeared to be Hispanic and in their early 20s. Desmond was struck by four bullets and died from his injuries. Prior to the shooting, Desmond suffered from numerous physical and mental handicaps and was not involved in any gang activity. Five days later, on July 10th, 2003, around 1 p.m., Mark and Anton were chatting at a bus stop while Mark waited for the bus. As they were at the bus stop, someone began shooting at them from the side. As Mark tried to get away, he was struck in the left thigh by a bullet. He ran into a nearby tobacco store and saw Anton fall in the driveway, then get up and drop again. Eyewitnesses said the gunman appeared to be Hispanic, about five foot six, and wearing a black Raider cap. Anton died from two gunshot wounds. One bullet entered his back, exited his chest, and entered his left arm. The other bullet pierced his right hip. Mark was treated at the hospital and later released. The gunman was arrested on July 17, 2003. He was wearing a cap with the right P-12, which referred to the Pomona 12th Street Gang. His name was Tony, but his hood name was Knuckles. A search of Tony's jail cell disclosed other writings and paper cutouts that referred to Knuckles, 12th Street, and Sharkies. A picture of Martin Luther King in a history book had been crossed out. Tony Barron from 12th Street was ultimately convicted on two counts of first degree murder. He was sentenced to two consecutive life terms. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.